Welcome to the BBC. Bring me your balls. I feel like it was like a bad one night stand. No, we're like, I'm gonna chase on the world. Ah. Lovely Las Vegas where you can bring a hooker to your room but you can't bleach an asshole. Sometimes I bring in cats. <laughs> working for Luba is like working for Hitler with tits. Whoa. Hello listeners and welcome to another week of the BBC podcast. That is the big black I mean, Between Both Cheeks podcast. I am Becca here with Luba today. Yeah, hello everyone. <laughs> That's our new shtick, you guys. That's the new intro. <laughs> and we're- It was the old intro forever yeah. and then we let it drop and then- we forgot we about it. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking of bringing it back, we have a new guest for you all. Kind of an interesting story. I'm really excited to learn more. We have Jake here from, is it Crate Skincare, Crate Club? Like the island in Greece, but with a K. Crete. Okay. All right. So Jake, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about who you are and why and how and who you started your brand for? Sure. Um... 32. I live in LA. So I kind of split my time in life between LA and New York. Uh, went to school for math and econ, and I haven't used any of those, you know, in 10 years since graduating. It's funny because I started some a company right out of school. And so I've never actually technically worked for anyone. I've been an intern and things like that, but you know, since college, I've been doing my own things. I've had a couple different businesses that were successful. And um, the reason I got into skincare was in 2017, I was in a ski accident. And uh, ski hit me, cut my nose open, had a really bad scar in my nose. And so I was kind of forced into learning about scar treatment and redness reduction treatments and then concealer as just this unbelievable tool that guys just don't use. I think almost every guy has used it once or twice, maybe a prom, a pimple, or something like that. You use your mom, sisters, mm -hmm. friends, whatever. But, <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's so taboo and it's it's seen as very feminine and some of these things are like they're not feminine at all just covering a pimple is not feminine like healing a scar or dry skin it's just it makes sense we all care about how we look so why not do the really easy things that make your face look good I mean it's where everyone looks at you all the time so I started Crete I learned some chemistry I formulated our first products and uh, a couple of years later now we're here the rest is history yeah wild yeah and when you say oh go ahead luba i was just gonna say isn't it interesting that you know, most business owners that you talk to that started something like not that they went to school for maybe not what they were passionate about but like something happened to them as an experience and then they yeah. they fixed that that void that white space there's an out of necessity factor that a lot of entrepreneurs have and it's not even necessarily a necessity it's also like necessity and opportunity because a lot of people yeah. look like, oh, I wish this thing existed, but you know, I wish I could get from to LA from New York in 10 minutes, but okay, I don't have the means to make whatever that is. I did have the means to make this happen. And the actual business model that we use is really good. I mean, it's the repeat customers, it's big high margins. We can manufacture it in not just the US, but in Southern California, which like you can't manufacture anything in California, but skincare yeah. is a hub here because. I guess it's just the center of beauty. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, totally. I was going to say, when you say that you um, formulated your own products at the very beginning, I've seen photos of you literally in your home with like beakers and test tubes. So is that from, it, is that from Instagram or? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was at the very beginning. The first, I don't know, a couple thousand bottles, you know, we made. Um, like we did all the testing and we always, anything we took, we brought to, to, a uh, you know, an FDA approved lab and they run microbiological tests and challenge tests and which is like to see if the preservatives work and say, so do all that. Um, but yeah, I, I literally set up a lab in my apartment to formulate the initial formulas. Now we manufacture it like, you know, an outsourced place, but it was kind of crazy. And it was, you know, there was a lockdown, so you couldn't, go anywhere so that was kind of my only option if I wanted to develop products also formulators are 20 plus thousand dollars and take nine to 
18 months sometimes to get you. I mean, you guys know it's like yeah. take a while. So I said, okay, I'm trying to make something. The chemistry is not that complicated. Let me order some, some equipment. Um, there was a funny story that some of my equipment was stolen, like, like, cause I it would get mailed to me. And so there's a package thief, like in the neighborhood and he stole, I think some beakers and some like microbiological tests. And so I called the police cause I saw the guy stealing the packaging and he's like, what's in your packages. And I was like, I uh... explain this. Uh, it's like beakers <laughs> and stuff. He goes, why do you need beakers? I'm like, I have a skincare company. He's like, and then I saw him like writing stuff down. I'm like, oh no, I'm definitely like, on the radar with like yeah. you know, Hollywood Sheriff's Department for like yeah. having science equipment. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, you know, I called the University of YouTube. You can teach yourself anything. You know what? You're, it's very refreshing to talk to a business owner like you because you said a couple of things that like got my juices flowing, if you will, like FDA approved lab, the investment to do it. So many people think that having a business or having specifically a skincare line is like, let me mix a couple things in my KitchenAid at home, put a label on it and put it on the shelf. And it's not. Not to make a real shelf, not to get to retail and not to get into Amazon. I mean, we're, we're launching Amazon soon. Just to, just to be able to post like pictures, you need to have a registered trademark and stuff and apply like on your packages, you need GS1 specific UPC codes, which are those little barcodes. Yeah. There are a lot of hoops to go anywhere legitimate. Awesome. And there are yes. no shortcuts for those things. Yeah, you could, you know, go to a local farmer's market, make some stuff in your kitchen and sell 30 of those a week. Like that's, yeah. you know, you're not going to be big enough for any regulatory anything to care at that point. But if you want to do anything of scale or consequence, you you have to do it the right way. Yeah. Absolutely. And the liability factor too, right? Yeah. Um, that is also true. Yeah. For just, just to get in the weeds, like the insurance you have to carry to even sell on Amazon mm -hmm. or just in general, to be a smart person is general liability insurance. And they ask you if your stuff is tested and, and all that stuff. So yes. yeah, I mean, there's low regulation if you're doing what's called a cosmetic, which is, you know, God bless America for that, because it's not yes. like that in Canada. <laughs> but there's still hoops you need to jump through. It's just you don't need the FDA involved. But once you start getting to medicine and other things, the FDA gets crazy. Oh, Our, the FDA is very loose on, on cosmetics companies, actually, and supplements companies, too. Yeah. Like, Europe is way stricter. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, Australia. Europe, for sure. We have yeah. a whole blog all about that on our <laughs> website, you guys. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So what is, what was the first product that created, tell, you created, tell us about that. So that, that is this one. It's a hyaluronic acid serum uh, with apple stem cell extract, which we import from Switzerland. It's, it's basically a better version of what I use to reduce the scar on my nose. That was kind of mostly just hyaluronic acid. And I said, okay, what are other enhancers? Did a lot of research. The way I kind of went about it was it was systematic. I ordered all of the best rated serums and moisturizers, you know, La Mer's and this and that. And I basically used them all for a month or two. It was not a cheap, uh, yeah. you know, experiment. <laughs> you really but, wanted your um, nose even, hey? Yeah, but it was also, well, this is when I decided to to do Crete. Um, and I just said, okay, well, like this one's good. This one's good. These are bad. And I, and I started having realizations, the thicker ones, which use a higher molecular weight of hyaluronic acid were better. That gelled better. It dried and left a protective coat, which is called a film former better. And I wasn't, I'm not a, like a chemistry background, but like you Google it and you then know the phrase film former. And then you look at this and a spreadsheet and a month and nothing else to do because there's a lockdown and you can learn a lot of stuff. So I essentially came up with the kind of the Frankenstein of like the best of this, the best of this ingredients. I took everything else out, mixed it, and that got me 95% to what we have now. So it just works. I mean, our, our return rate is less than 1%. And everyone loves it. We, we just have customers on repeat. It's great. And would you say your customers um, are primarily men or everybody? Who do you market to? We market to guys because when I was deciding to do it, it was never going to be just for women because like I wanted to make sure guys were included. So when the decision of unisex versus versus guys, I made the packaging a little more unisex. Like this is not screaming like for men. So this is a cool thing we do where all of our products like... Uh, Oh, up. cool. Okay, yeah, you guys the watch the video. Like, 
Yeah, and then our, you know, our concealer that's launching soon. It's hard to do it with the camera. Ooh, very go. smart. So yeah, when you have them lined up, it's kind of like Aesop-ish. It's like yeah. really, really beautiful. But um, yeah, I wanted to to market it to guys because we realized we had to kind of pick a lane. Um, we do actually have a lot of females buying it because our stuff is so high quality for the price that females just discover it. I'm not even sure how, because we don't target them on Facebook and Instagram, but like, I don't know, 10 to 20% of our sales are, are women. And they're seeing it in their boyfriend's stuff. bathroom. Yeah. But we and get comments on Facebook and we're like, how did you literally find this ad? It's not going to women, but, um, yeah, we wanted to educate guys versus differentiate with women. You guys have a million brands that you know of, and the loyalty is not there with women as much because something new comes on TikTok and the girlfriend, she finds some snail muse in next week. I don't know, something crazy. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, she'll get a product, but she will move to the next cool one next week. So guys, when we break through, which is a little more expensive, a little harder, they're, they're not. They use yeah. the same, they use Axe body spray from age 18 to 25 and then something else from 25 to 80. And then that's, you know, there's like one or two switches in your life for products. And like, we want to be the 30 plus forever kind of, kind of switch. Jake, where does the name come from? Um, There's two kind of paths that intersected perfectly. So the first was, I always liked Greek and Roman sounding names like uh, Nike, Kith, Nyx Cosmetics. Like I like those K's, T's, R's. And so I started by looking at like Greek gods and I don't know, it's like, ooh, Achilles skincare. I was like, eh, these just sound too like we're going so heavy masculine to try to convince you it's not mm. feminine. And I was like, it's a little heavy handed. I wanted something a little like Nike's perfect. It's just a cool short word with nice sounds. Um, so then I couldn't think of a name specifically, but then concealer was supposed to be our first product. And I thought women have foundation. Maybe we'll call the concealer concrete and then concrete. Oh, cool. And I was like, Oh, Crete. Okay. And then I changed it to a K. So we don't get confused with the Island. And that was it. Five letter word, really easy to spell. We own all the IP. Like, okay, there you go. It kind of worked. So we ended up backing into it like that. So there's no crazy story like you're from Greece, family from no, Greece. <laughs> Say that again. I'm Jewish. I no, I've never been to Greece. I'm okay. I'm hopefully going soon, but I've traveled a lot. I always liked Greek mythology. That's why I kind of or and and so I kind of wanted to. I know a little bit about I think like the story of the Minotaur and some of the things that happened in Crete. But no, I just it's a cool name. I mean that's great. Know. That's a great story. Yeah, it's all very organic. Yeah. We'll have to go to Crete. I mean, it's probably an, it's a very nice place. Bring your to... product and take a picture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> On Crete. Well, it's funny because in some of the trademarks, like in Israel, the way they spell Crete is with a K from like the ancient times. So they rejected us originally saying it was the name of the country. And then we had to, I had to hire an Israeli lawyer to like say no. So we ended up getting it because we're saying it's in English, not in Hebrew. It was just, it was annoying. But yeah, so... It kind of is the name still in an ancient way. Okay. Jake, so, is, sorry, go ahead, Becca. So you just mentioned you were trademarking in Israel. Is Crete global then? We are not. I mean, we've sold a couple in Canada, but I mean, the shipping is like 20 something dollars. And so it's like, I mean, our price points are like 39 to $64 for our products right now. So it's not. You know, it's not like a $5 product with $20 of shipping. Some people do just pull the trigger and do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it's 99% America. We do plan on launching internationally, or I would rather own our IP everywhere. So if we do well enough and someone who's international wants to merge, buy us, partnership, whatever, we can do that. Mm -hmm. So um, I filed them myself couple thousand bucks and some research and you know we own it in the eu uk china india japan like all the places you'd want to own it so nice i don't even need to think about it you know it's just we kind of own it i it, i the last thing you'd want is to build a brand that's recognized and then not have it protected the next place you want to go yes mm -hmm. we know yeah. all about that yeah yeah 
Um, Jake, what's the what's the end goal? Where do you where do you see the brand in like three, five, fifteen years? Fifteen years, someone better have bought it. <laughs> um, I I believe in profitability. I hate these direct consumer companies that like just go kind of fundraising round to fundraising round. They have like a charismatic founder who's really good at raising money. And he's really good at then using that money to have vanity metrics to raise more money and eventually kind of, you know, away Casper Mattress, all these companies that are like, mm-hmm. like, they're not real companies. They've just lost money. They've just lost it in a way that looks appealing. And I don't really understand why they keep getting money. So we, within our first year, were like, we were spending a dollar and making more than a dollar. Um, and so now our goal is to spend a dollar and make, let's say three bucks and make it faster because the subscriber takes a couple of months, maybe to recoup the money. So as we're doing that, we're able to grow really fast because we don't rely on outside funding. I funded it entirely myself for a couple of years. So I still own it. It's fast decisions, no problem. And so, yeah, as we grow, might do outside money, might not need to, but, uh, yeah, the ultimate goal would most likely to be to grow it in a position where someone comes along and I don't have to work anymore. Right. You want to be on a beach. <laughs> he wants to be in Crete. No, honestly, I I think I'd probably skiing might be a little more my favorite than a beach vacation, but I like both. It's hard to choose. Maybe a mountain somewhere. Okay. Now, Crete has a subscription program. Can you tell us a little bit about that and why you chose to do that and what steps you took to make that happen? So for the six months we launched, the first six months, which is around May of 2021, kind of when the lockdowns were ending, we like, okay, we're going to go out and skincare will do well again. Uh, Just happened to be kind of the same time we were launching. For the first six months, we saw we had a lot of repeat customers, but we saw that we had to email them in order to get them back. But as soon as we did, they'd come back. And so we thought, okay, well, if they are really like the product, what if we just give them a discount and we see if we can get subscribers? Um, We went for the boldest thing we could, which is a monthly subscription of a $39 product. It's discounted down to 30, but still like, it's not cheap. Um, And it worked. And we were like, okay, that's great. I came up with a I thought people would need a big offer because again, once they try it, they come back. So we said, okay, we'll discount it down to like 50% or $6 down. And so, yeah, we, we have a huge first bottle discount and then like crazy retention. So, you know, we lose a couple bucks in the first one and we kind of break even once you get to the second month and then the third month it's profitable. But um, yeah, it was pretty simple. We once, one big thing is that you have to let people skip or change the frequency because, um, yeah, if they just have too much product but like it, they'll cancel the subscription. But if they can skip a month or two, they'll stay on to keep the discount. And so that was one of the things we learned to like fine tune and kind of analyze the cadence of how fast people would use the product. Mm-hmm. So you really have to have an understanding of your customer and their experience and communicate with them. Because if you can reach out and, and like you know that after three months, a lot of people cancel, well, right before three months, tell them, hey, do you want to pause for a month or two with an email? Usually they'll respond with yes, and you'll keep them. So you can anticipate stuff like that. But yeah, we just have the subscription for this, the one product, because we know how fast this, we launched the body serum. It's larger. We launched it on Black Friday. So, you know, a month and a half ago, we're not sure how long it takes people to use it. I know I use them every about two to three months. But, you know, we haven't even been out long enough to see the first cycle of repeat customers. So we'll, we'll kind of analyze that. But, yeah, there's a lot of intention and thought that goes into all of our, our decisions. And then you kind of just have to pull the trigger on what you think makes sense. You know, you can get 80% the way there and then you jump. Yeah, totally. And do you just for because most of our audience or listeners are business owners, um, when you say you know, you need to analyze and think these things through. How do you do that? Are you looking at the analytics and reports and are you using data or are you straight up talking to your customers and getting anecdotal feedback or both? There's a, there's a combination of, of both. There's like, 
you, you always want to look at both. You want to look at like the actual numbers of behavior, right? Like if everyone's coming to your website and they're not making it to the product detail page because they're losing on the homepage, it's pretty obvious. There's a problem with your homepage. If people aren't clicking on your ads, there's a problem. Your ads aren't good enough to get people to click. So sometimes you can just look at the analytics and it's, and it's pretty obvious. Other things like why are you canceling after... The average is, let's say, I'm I'm making it up right now. Like, let's say two and a half months in, people are canceling subscriptions on average. Why is it two and a half months? Okay, well, let me go. I don't really necessarily know. There's not, is it because it's too expensive? Is it because you have too much? There's a couple potential reasons. So you ask a couple people. And, you know, if you ask 30 people, like, in, in 28 of them say it's because I have too much. And nobody is saying it's because I don't like it. It's like, okay. Yeah, it's because they have too much. Let's build something to do that. So it's a combination. And then one really powerful tool for a website is called Hotjar, H-O-T-J-A-R. Um, it lets you record anonymous user sessions. So, you know, you don't know who the specific person was, but you can just be like, okay, let me go look at what tw the last 20 people on the website did. You see, they all scrolled on the home page and then they click this thing. It's like, that's not a button. Why is everyone, oh, they think that's a button. Let's make it a button, I guess. So there's a combination of kind of a couple of things you can do. And, you know, again, they, they definitely let you know when something's wrong. They don't necessarily tell you what to do to fix it, but like there's three levels. Something's wrong. What's the thing that's wrong? And then how do I fix it? So you'll get to what's, you know, something's wrong. And then what's the thing that's wrong with these tools? You know, there's always clever problem solving to fix it. And your fix might not fix it. You have to test that. So but yeah, just knowing what your customers are thinking and doing is it's everything. It's we have an amazing opportunity now versus, you know, let's say 20, 30 years ago. You can know every click, every level of every behavior on your site. It's pretty good. Yeah, totally. Jake, do you have any employees or is this a are you solopreneur in this? We we have a bunch now. I was solo for a while with some part-time people. Now there's about five or six of us fully, fully involved and probably about three to five part-time. And I mean, they're part-time, like maybe it's two hours a week, maybe it's 30 hours a week. It, it depends, you know, emails, if we're doing a lot, design, package design, if we're doing a bunch, we usually do those in spurts. So it's kind of like full-time for a month and then not for two months. So um, yeah, it's, it's only as needed, like the only people I would make full-time are ones who can do a bunch of things. I call it bring me good surprises. So like, <laughs> you know, our developer might say, hey, I had an idea for a thing. I kind of built it over the weekend. What do you think? I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. Let's let's try that. You know, those kinds of, those are the only kinds of people I ever hire full-time. I love that. Bring me good surprises. Yeah, everything is an entrepreneur is a bad surprise. <laughs> like, you know when something good is happening because it's a slow grind to that point. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an acquisition cost is going down a dollar a week and okay, it's six months later, we finally hit our target or whatever it is. So getting just random good surprises is a, is a game changer. And some can bring you a feature or an idea that you, yeah, you didn't think of yourself. Okay, I love that. And then I have another question. Just um, for our listeners to contextualize how to do a subscription, if that's something they want to explore for their business, are you, first of all, is your website on Shopify? Yeah. We, are we you started, using Recharge? Yeah. We are not using Recharge. We're using Bold, but a lot of people use Recharge as well. We had some very specific things we wanted to do with our initial offer, and we have a full-time developer, so bold just worked for the very customized okay. version of a subscription i've heard good things about recharge and it's bigger than bold um i would say it's probably a safe bet again we only chose bold because of the very specific way it would let us do a couple of like pauses and initial offer things the way we wanted to okay great so write that down everybody <laughs> if your website is also on shopify yeah, Shopify is great. It just takes care of like yeah. all the small things you didn't think about. Like, oh, there's a chargeback. What do I do? They let you do it. Or there's a discount code. Okay, you go there into the discounts tab, make it, and it's active two seconds later. You'd have to build all of those things yourself if you if you wanted to have a custom site. It's 
Yeah. People should use it until they're making many millions a year and then they should hire a team to go custom. Yeah. Yeah. We're on Shopify too. And I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Jake, what is your piece of advice for someone that wants to get into business for themselves in skincare? Understand the business you're getting into um, and also understand your lifestyle and, and tolerance for risk and financial security. You know, there's a lot of glamorous stories about entrepreneurs, but, you know, like 90% of startups like don't make it. I mean, people hear that and, you know, the delusional among us, myself included, are like, I am, I'm going to be the 10%. That's great. But being that 10% is like, I had to fund this for years. I'm foregoing a salary at another company. So it's not just putting money into it. It's also not earning somewhere else. So I'm taking a swing because I am in a fortunate position to be able to. Um, You're going to work 24 seven for a while for something that may or may not work, you know, until, until we started selling, it was a year and a half, two years of us putting products together, brand guides, taking cool photography, getting everything ready, hire teams. It was a lot of work to be like, well, maybe one day we run ads and nobody buys it. Yeah. So there's risks. However, there's nothing quite like making something that is your own. And then people like the idea that it, every day someone in every 50 states like buys my stuff and like is using it. It's like pretty, pretty crazy. You know, I could be watching TV and think like, oh, the the machine is just working. People are buying it. They're using it. They're getting better skin. They're feeling good. It's it's pretty it's pretty amazing. Um, yeah. But yeah, and then one big piece of advice is you can learn anything online. Anything. If you need to know about uh, nexus taxes in various states, you can. It's annoying, but you can Google it and read. If you need to know about chemistry to formulate products, if you need to know about fulfillment and shipping rate like you can google or youtube literally anything and it's free you just have to kind of be somewhat decent at figuring out what you need to learn and then have some patience and when you sit down and read inevitably a lot of mediocre articles and a couple good ones it's great advice thank you yeah everything is figure outable yeah i learned chemistry i'm not a chem like i wasn't a chemist like yeah it's a yeah. ridiculous thing for me to have thought I could learn, but I did. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah you need to have the audacity mm. to think that yeah. you can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there's, but also still be a realist and say like, okay, is your product actually this good? Is mm-hmm. your business model actually this good? You know, so I think a $39 serum that people now buy once a month without me having to really market them. Okay. It's a good position to be in. We could have gotten out and they, people could have said your price is ludicrous. Like, and I could have tried to sell for 10 bucks and the margins wouldn't have been that good. And and who knows? Totally different business. So even within making good product, a good brand, it's a lot of pieces have to come together. Okay. And if somebody wants to try Crete skincare, where should they go and what should they get first? So they can go to Crete, K-R-E-T-E dot club, C-L-U-B. So not .com, .club. Um, and we have two products right now, so it's very simple. We have the facial serum and the body serum. So we get both. Developing. Yeah, we have what's called the head-to-toe bundle because it covers you from head-to-toe. Um, this one has uh, hyaluronic acid and apple stem cell extract. This one has hyaluronic acid and tripeptide 29, which is a collagen-boosting ingredient. So we use only the absolute best stuff. Every little detail is like kind of fine tuned. So the body serum is different. It slips a little better. It's clear. It's odorless. So it doesn't, you know, it actually makes tattoos look like amazing. We didn't even realize that as a, as a thing, but then we kept getting emails with pictures. People just like unsoliciting like our <laughs> and we're like, okay. Yeah. So now we're working with a couple influencers to say, Hey, get it for your tattoos. Ooh. So, you know, it's a pretty good situation. Um, but yeah, these products work for women. They work fantastic for women. You know, some people will say, well, guys, skin is a little thicker, different pH. Yeah. Not enough to make like hyaluronic acid, not work for everybody. But, uh, yeah, we use a specific molecular weight. I know you, I mean, getting a little nerdier because I think you guys. Oh, it's good. We know. <laughs> yeah. The, I hate the little dropper one. No, we know all about that. We yeah. All I like that. that. If you're going to make a skincare brand for guys, like this move is like not going to happen. They're not going to use that. 
No. It needs to be as is, simple as possible. Second is like the, the, the higher molecular weight ones are more expensive, but they, they just work. You put it on, you feel a tightening sensation. So you know it is working like right away. And, and feeling that the product is working right away will get you to buy in and actually use it enough. So we'll have the results. Mm -hmm. So we just made sure we just got the best ingredients from the best suppliers, formulated them in the best way. And it was like, okay, oh, if you do that, you get a good product. It's not rocket science. I guess mm -hmm. it's chemistry, but it's not rocket science. <laughs> So good. <laughs> okay. And just quickly before we end here, can you explain a little bit about the 30 second skincare yes. message that Crete has? So one of the reasons that I never use skincare was because it was, let's say, too feminine. Another reason was you go into a store like Sephora. It's like, well, I wasn't raised in a culture that understood this. I wasn't trying products every day. Girls are, you know. From age, I don't know, I don't know when girls started even five, four, ten, something. You just use various skincare and cosmetics products. And it's a thing girls do. I walk in, I don't know where to start. They say a toner or this or that. I was like, okay, what is the antithesis of Sephora? You know? And I thought, okay, one product skincare routine takes 30 seconds to use or less. I was like, okay. We I was thinking 10 second skincare, and eh, it sounds like a scam. It doesn't work. Nothing works in 10 seconds. 60 seconds skincare sounds a little too long. 30 seconds sounds great. I mean, to be honest, this takes five seconds to use. But 30 seconds basically is a promise to our customers that anything we do will take 30 seconds to learn about, understand, or use. So it's it's just a general mindset of like, this is a no BS easy brand. You're never going to be in the bathroom with 10 products in a regimen. You're never going to read our website and be like, what are these 95 products? I don't know what's going on. Okay. Love that. So if you want to learn more about Crete skincare, go to Crete with a K dot club and take 30 seconds to review both of their products and subscribe. We will have all of their links and Jake's information in the show notes. You can leave us a review on Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen, and go ahead and subscribe so you get every new episode in your inbox. If you have any feedback for us or for Jake, send us an email to comments at betweenbothcheeks.com, and we'll see you next week. Good night. Good night.